This story is my personal experience of how I found God, or how God found me. It began when I first questioned myself about the origins of man. Questions that took me to the mountains of Oaxaca, Mexico, in search of answers. To my surprise, those answers lay hidden at the other side of the world, in the mountains of Rajasthan, India. I not only found the origins of man, I found the origins of my own existence. I found the mind of God. There is no greater truth that I can leave behind to my son than the truth God stamped in my heart. Look, I'm going to tell you a story. What do you think? But let's start from the beginning. I'm going to tell you about some books that are very, very important. Okay? These are the books that have been written about God. They're about the four or five main religions of man. See, this is the book of the Jews. It's called the Torah. It talks about the Ten Commandments that God gave the Jews and to all of us. This is the book for those who believe in Christ. It also is a book for the Jews and it's called the Bible. And this one belongs to the Buddhists. It's about Buddha and how he became enlightened under a tree in a beautiful garden. And look, there is also this one for those who lived in India. It's called the Bhagavad Gita. It talks a lot about God and about a prince called Krishna, also in a lovely garden. And this is the Quran, the Book of Islam. It's a great and very important religion. It also has something to do with the Old Testament. Well, I'm going to tell you a story about a place that all of these books talk about. A place they call paradise, heaven on earth. I'm going to tell you about a garden that existed when the world was new. The Jews and the Christians speak of a certain garden where there was a man and a woman. Adam and Eve. The first humans. For Muslims, this garden was the garden of Allah. The Hindus also speak of a garden where Krishna was the prince of paradise. They all speak of a paradise on earth, of a wonderful garden, of when the world was new and clean. Did this place really exist? I'll also tell you about a place in Oaxaca, Mexico. A place they call the Nest of the Eagles, in Huautla de Jimenez. Here I met Ponciano, a Mesetec shaman. He was my first great teacher. It was with Ponciano that I understood that God does indeed exist. Ponciano showed me many things. With him I had many visions of destruction as well as visions of God and of the divine. They are among the most powerful and profound experiences I have ever had. Wonderful, Wautla de Jimenez. It was here, with him, that I understood that God does exist. God does exist. But there were many visions that neither Ponciano nor I could decipher. Ponciano told me that I would go far away to a distant land with people like myself. But I had already found God, or that is what I thought. Through my spiritual quest, I read and learned about many different cultures and religions of man. 
even about primitive man. Who was this God of all religions? Who is this God that we all pray to when we invoke that divine being? That God that exists in all our religions, the father and mother of all humanity. But let's go back to the beginning. First, let me tell you who I am. Well, as it turns out, little man, I'm your dad. Mm-hmm. When I was your age, the thing that impressed me most about Mexico was its poverty. On the bus to school, I would always ask myself, why did some have everything while others didn't have anything? Why was there so much pollution? Why so much violence? Why so much injustice? When I was eight years old, I dreamt of an incredible place. I remember the sensation I felt more than the actual place. In my dream, I was sitting with a young woman. I just caressed her hair, that was all. That was the dream, in such a beautiful place. I don't think I've ever felt so much love in all my life. And I was only eight, just about your age. I remember that when I woke up from that dream, all I wanted to do was to fall asleep again so I could return to that amazing place. When I realized I could not go back to that beautiful garden, I remember I cried a great deal. I was full of sadness because I understood that the garden existed, but I also knew that it did not exist anymore. But do you recall that Ponciano told me I would go very far, to a distant land? It all began in London, in a breathtaking church. I remember one day that I was praying. I told God that I was interested in knowing more about a type of meditation that came from India. A meditation that would improve my relationship with God. A meditation known as Raj Yoga. I asked him to give me a sign. What was that meditation all about? What was Raj Yoga? How was it going to improve my relationship with God? The first thing I saw when I looked up was that statue. Knowledge. It was knowledge. Well, it turned out to be true. Raja Yoga was the deepest and most profound knowledge my ears had ever heard. Till this day, it still is. It was then I understood all things that neither Ponciana nor I could decipher. I understood everything, even the dream I had when I was eight years old, inside that garden. This knowledge was so beautiful and profound, and how simple it was. Do you know what is the biggest secret of all? What? The biggest secret after God? Which one? Reincarnation. The eternity of the soul, here on earth or anywhere. We are forever. We're eternal. We are eternal.
If the situation is like this now, what will happen in a few years? Hmm? Hell is already here. It is now. Just look at it. And guess what, little man? There had never been so many human beings on the planet as now. We consume much more than ever before in our history. Where are we going to keep getting so many natural resources? We go on heating up the planet and contaminating it as if it were something natural. And this will be the population calculated for the next 10 years. Just think, even nature can't tolerate any more abuse. Nature is ready to experience a complete and total transformation. Whether we like it or not, we are heading that way. But let's go back to the beginning. Let's return to that garden, to that creation made by God, before Christ came into the world. The garden of Adam, ruler of this garden, who was Adam? He was God's first creation. The first man in his image and likeness. And now that we understand the concept of reincarnation and the eternity of the soul, here or anywhere, eternity, forever, without a beginning or an end, an eternal cycle like a circle or a big cycle going round and round forever. Look at the magnificence of all eternity, a golden age and an iron age, like day and night. But guess what? In this eternal circle or this great cycle, we are now moving through something called the confluence. The confluence is where the end of the eternal cycle joins with the eternal beginnings of the circle like the hands of a clock. All human beings, together with all animals, are living the most important moment in all our histories. We are about to leave this planet and return to our true home, to our one and only creator. We are going to our sweet eternal home to be with the Creator, not only of Adam, Eve, Christ, Buddha, and other great souls, to join the Creator of each and every one of us who live on this planet. A great family, eternally, with one God, one God. Even if no one believes it, a world without fear, a world without hate. Let's look for that beginning, that garden. How was that paradise on earth? Let's leave out all those dinosaurs. Let's go further back to the beginning, when the world was a new and clean sphere floating in space, new and pure. Who's going to argue with me? Hmm? And look at what we have done with our garden. All this is happening now. It's what nobody wants to see. Hell. The confluence is when the circle reaches the place it started from. In other words, the great cycle is reaching its end. We are all going back to God while the earth undergoes the most important transformation in the history of the world. 
It has to do with our arriving on and our leaving this planet. And God's hand intervenes in this. He comes to transform this ancient, soiled world into a new one once again. Creation repeats itself and the opportunity to descend into this new world is given to each and every one of us. We even choose when we come down. This hell that we are all living is about to end. All the things that we don't like will finally be over. The great liberation is about to arrive. But this liberation will finally take us to our true home. To be with our only Father, the Father of all souls. We will all be with God, living in an indescribable peace. Our planet will be cleansing itself and the eternal reincarnation will begin again. The cycle will start once more in a new and clean world for all of us. Without violence, without wars, it shall be a clean and perfect world. And his first creation was Adam, the first human being, the greatest personality in the history of the world. He was the very first one. He is the first one. This was long before Christ came along, long before the Egyptians. It was the beginning of all our history here in the world. I'm sure of this. I saw it. I saw that garden. We are not creatures or microbes in constant evolution, nor did we come from the sea. We really are no more than souls, mere energy inside these human bodies. Energies that move and control our bodies. We are souls, always reincarnating into human bodies. Always reincarnating from one body into the next. It's part of the eternal drama. But our acts determine our place in history what we are living today is a direct result of our actions. Each one of us creates our own situation here on the earth. And now, we don't even know who we are or where we come from. This is truly a brothel. We don't even remember that we are all brothers. We are living in a true hell. One day, this world was an earthly paradise. But look at it today. A filthy garbage dump, completely degraded, a veritable brothel. And while the majority of the world lives in painful and shameful poverty, the greed of others is such that even the animals are begging for mercy. So much pain and injustice. Just take a look. Divisions. We are all divided. The divisions even in our own religions. If a tree has many branches and each branch represents one religion, look at how many divisions there are on each branch. The Jews are divided amongst themselves. The Christians a bit more. Between Arabs, there are also many divisions. But this great tree of all the religions came from one seed. It is the seed of all religions. And this seed is God. The only God of all religions. The only God of all souls. And God's creation, his worldly creation, was that beautiful planet clear and pristine. The creation of our existence. Think about this little man. The creation of our existence here on earth. 
the beginning of our history. Planet Earth is not our true home. We're not from here. We all come from another place. All souls come down to this beautiful blue sphere. Look at its perfect and beautiful turquoise water. What seed, what species wouldn't be able to grow here in this spectacular and perfect earthly garden? Hmm? Seeds, seeds, and more seeds. God is the keeper of our garden. To come down, take a body, to be able to see and feel, to be able to listen and breathe in such a kind and perfect environment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you a thousand times. Thank you. Imagine to come down for the first time. Like the first human being. What a grand personality, that first one. Hmm? But who was that first one? And where is that first one? Where is Adam? It was when I was in London and I took the Raj Yoga course that I understood who and where Adam is now and what his role is today. The last birth that Adam had was here in India. Actually, it was here where God found him to give him the true knowledge of who he was and where he'd come from. And it was this God, through this man, who comes to remind us of who we are and where we come from. This is his memorial here in India. His ashes are inside this place called the Tower of Peace. This is one of the most sacred places on earth. This Tower of Peace exists in a place called Maruba, the forest of honey. And the honey is this knowledge that God left for all of us. It's the real knowledge of all religions. Finally, we will all know who we are and where we come from. The Forest of Honey is a world spiritual university established here in India by the Supreme Father using this instrument named Dada Lekraj, better known today as Brahma Baba. This was the last birth that Adam had while he was here on earth. He was the first one to arrive and the first one to go, our guide and teacher. It was in his later years when God appeared to him to give him this knowledge. Profound knowledge. God gave him the task to establish this great university and today this place has many modern installations. It's a university for all of humanity. Hundreds of thousands of people from countries all over the world come, and everyone believes in that garden. That's why we're here. And if you ask me what that knowledge was, well, come with me. It was a very special knowledge. This knowledge came and still comes directly from God. It is the most sacred and most important information that exists in the world today, more than anything else. God found his first creation, and in this, his last birth, God fills him with knowledge. God comes to him and uses him as an instrument so that here on earth, we could have the knowledge of who we are and where we come from, who is God, what is life and what is death? But this man, this great personality is not with us anymore. 
From 1936 to 1969, God spoke through him. This knowledge was written and is now available to everyone who is interested in knowing about it. It is a spiritual university for all humanity. This is the World Spiritual University of the Brahma Kumars and Kumaris. This is God's school. Here you will find the greatest and most valuable spiritual treasures in all the world. God is here, Alan. This is God's school. The great gardener came down to this great garden. He comes only once during the entire cycle. He comes and changes this old, sullied world into a new and clean one. He will take the dirty thorns and transform them into future flowers that will come down once more and be reborn in a pure and clean world. God tells us that at this university, that science has not invented bombs just to have them stored in warehouses. All these bombs will be used. They will explode, all of them. It's the end of our history. That's the way everything is going to begin, the great war of bombs. But actually, the war has already begun. Natural catastrophes will follow. Nature is also fed up with so much abuse. Thank you. A thousand times thank you. Thanks to our marvelous Mother Nature that gives us so much. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for so much love. Thank you again to this planet that is so unique in all the galaxy for taking care of us. Thank you. A hundred thousand times thank you. And even though you are little now, and there are many who are little, everything will be all right. Everything will be okay, little man. We are leaving this planet. The same way we arrived, we will depart. And while the majority of us will be leaving this planet, a few will remain to help reconstruct that new world and that new dawn. Look, Alan. God now uses this woman to communicate with us. She is our dear sister, Dadi Gulzar. She's the instrument God chose. God loves her very much, little man. But he also loves you. That's why you're here. Look. This is God, Alan, using this corporeal instrument. What I'm telling you, Alan, is the truth. And even though many don't believe this, the entire world will soon know that God has arrived. He is here in the world. No organization in the world says this, or can say this openly. It's time for the great revelation. Let's shout it out loud, Alan. Let the whole world know about it. God is in the world. God is in the world. He is giving instructions. He comes to transform us and he comes to transform this old world. It's time to celebrate, little man. 
You tell your friends and I will tell their parents. Everybody is invited, everybody. That's what you and I have to do, little man. Let's celebrate, let's celebrate. God is in the world. It is God who is behind all of this. He is here. Alan, God is here. This is Madoban, little man, the forest of honey. And just like Ponciano told me that I would go to a faraway land to meet people like myself. Well, this place turned out to be the other side of the world, literally. Today, I am part of this great family. My mission? To do this film with you and to share the most valuable and greatest thing I have with you. This film is for you, little man. Look inside your heart, Alan. You too can be part of this great army of light. This garden and this new world are about to arrive. Look for it in your heart, Alan, and you will see that you will find it. Have faith in what I'm telling you. Have faith. We have always been together, and we will always be together. Okay? I love you very much, little man. Me too, Daddy. Thank you for being my son this life. You want to play? Let's go. Let's go. And where does this knowledge come from, Dad? This knowledge is very old. It appears every 5,000 years, just like the calendars and some ancient texts. It's cyclical, and this knowledge is here once again. It is the most beautiful and most profound knowledge that I personally have ever heard. In this knowledge, God teaches us to feel spiritual love for others and for our beautiful blue planet. A clean and honest and truthful love. How nice. In that heaven we all desire and are searching for, violence does not exist. And whoever practices violence at any level cannot enter that heaven. Corruption, greed, selfishness, lying, deceiving, these things do not exist in the vocabulary of heaven. Actually, those who practice violence do not even know heaven and will never know heaven. It is written that way, and it makes a lot of sense. And why that? Everything is written in the tree of life. And it is this same God, Alan, who comes for all the Jews and for all the Muslims. One same God who comes for all the Christians, all the Buddhists, and all the Hindus. God comes to unite all of us. One God. I want to tell you that the greatest happiness I have ever experienced in my life has been with you and your precious childhood. So joyful and innocent. Your purity has been without a doubt the most beautiful lesson I have ever learned. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, for all these things you've made me feel. Thank you. I know that it isn't easy to hear or to see all these things that I have shown you. Maybe you have a lot of questions. Nobody wants to die. We all want to live and be here in the world. The thing is that we have always been here, over and over again. It's just a question of understanding it. Eternity. 
But now comes time for the light. It's time for truth and happiness to arrive. And to be able to reach that happiness, we first need to let go of the old world and all this suffering. We have been lost, but now we know the way. And why that? It isn't easy to tell you the fact that we are leaving. But we are leaving, Alan. In each death, we leave. But look at us. Here we are once again. And I'm telling you the same thing all over again. Eternity does exist. I promise you this. It hides in the feelings of our memories. The golden age is coming. With time we have descended. Just as the law of anthropy confirms it. From being in this purity and this beauty of the Golden Age, we have now descended this long, long ladder. Now we are here, in the ugliest of times, wars and all that. What we are living today, Alan, is an absolute decadence. Changing ourselves first, from being a bad person to being a good one. That is what we learn at this university. The secret lies in changing our values from negative to positive. This is what God has come to teach us. To leave all those vices and bad actions behind and return to that purity. Imagine the garden that awaits us. Once again, go to heaven. Yes, Dad. This new world is coming, Alan, and it is the children who are going to construct it. But we need all the children. You can help us build it. Your purity is your greatest strength. But we have to make our best efforts if we want to reach that place. This is what we learn at this great university. Going to heaven is not something you get for free. We come here to transform all our negativity and all our impurities with efforts. God shows us how to do it here. The greatest realization I have had here is knowing that before coming down to the world, I was a pure and perfect being. We all were. It's our original state. We are beings of light, pure and perfect. It is here in the world where we have dirtied our faces, committing negative actions, how ugly, Dad. This is why the Confluence Age is so important. It is only now when God comes down. He comes only now to teach us about the possibility of returning to that once pure and perfect place. The thing is that nobody can come down to the new world without first learning how to be a good human being. Wow! Full of virtues and powers, spiritual powers. This is the law. We all believe in kindness. It's a universal virtue. We all strive for true and clean love. God is love. We all know this. Yes. And like a loving father, he comes to find his lost children. 
those rebel children who think we know it all, without knowing that without him, we are nothing. He's here, Alan, that loving father that has been searching to find us. He adopts us and teaches us the correct way. That father that makes us perfect like himself once again. Do you see, Alan? Do you see the wonder that awaits us? He makes us gods like him. It is the inheritance that he comes to give us. The inheritance of heaven on earth. The world is starting once more. It's the creation all over again. Only like gods will we enter that earthly world. Only by returning to kindness will we enter that kindness. Only going back to love will we enter that love that we are yearning for. These are the spiritual secrets that we learn in this great school. God teaches us how to return to our original state, our state of perfection. The past becomes our future. This is if we reclaim our original values. And nothing or no one can destroy the truth that lives in a personal experience. Here we are. We are all spiritual beings. Just like you. Just like me. We are a great family. Ancestors in time. It has nothing to do with a cult or a sect dressed in white. It's about a spiritual university. Knowledge of the heart, mind, and soul. We know in the very depth of our hearts that God has arrived into the world, that He is here with us and among us. We feel this in the most profound way. We come here to transform ourselves. We believe in kindness and in the internal cleanliness of our being. We believe in human unity and we believe in love. We are peace and we are searching for peace. We are light and we are searching for light. This is the living school of the human spirit. The shining truth. Now, listen to this. Today, she is the administrative head of the Brahman Kumaris. She has been meditating for over 80 years. At 96, she is ready to achieve her state of perfection. She is a firm friend and companion of God. Some say that she possesses the most stable mind on the planet, an authentic Raja Yogi. I give to you, Alan, one of the most beautiful and most valuable living treasure that all of humanity has today. From the majestic Mumbai, here in India, with you, Daddy Janki. Take her, little man, and let's witness. Let's make history, Alan. I am a soul, the child of the Supreme Soul. There is one command in the Gita, connect your mind with my mind. How can you focus your mind on the being of God? Until you have focused full attention on the Supreme Soul, it would be wrong to consider yourself as one who has religious knowledge. It is said in the Gita that God loves the knowledgeable soul. So what knowledge should be within that would make that soul loved by God? I would not say I am a daughter of God, but a son of God. I am his heir because I have connected my mind to his. This mind 
which was under the sway of the sense organs, has acquired the power to keep the organs under my control. I am no longer the slave to the five senses. If we are to become divine, then any aspect that is even slightly negative would stop me from being attractive to God. I am always concerned about what God likes. It is said that only God knows His instructions and His destination. God Himself knows what supreme directions should be given if a person is to attain salvation. No one else knows this. You, God, who have shown us the way to liberation and salvation for all time, you alone know that way. God, you are the creator of our fortune. At each moment, I experience that I am blessed with fortune. When you belong to God like this, you experience absolute happiness. The Supreme Soul, the Father, is Himself my companion. He makes me His companion and includes me in His work of establishing the Golden Age. The Supreme Soul is acting through Brahma Baba, the maker of fortune, and Shiva Baba, who bestows all blessings. So before the destruction, with faith in your intellect, you'll become victorious. The children take a step of courage, and the father gives a thousand steps of help. There is nothing greater in life than the love God has for us, His children. We should always give thanks. Always. <laughs>